come without political and now personal risk. On Friday, New York Congresswoman Carolyn Maloney introduced legislation requiring gun owners to carry liability insurance, much like car owners do. Last night, she received several death threats phoned into her New York office. The calls warned her not to move forward with gun safety legislation, and the New York Police Department is now investigating. Today, in a statement, she said, I take the threat of more gun violence very seriously, but it is not something that I will allow to stop me from doing my work. Another bill similar to Maloney's was introduced into the House by Democrat Adam Schiff. The California congressman wants to override the 2005 Protection of Lawful Commerce and Arms Act, which protects gun dealers and manufacturers when their guns are used in crimes. The gun industry is the only consumer product industry that does not take full legal responsibility for its products. I said that. It's the only industry. So Schiff is proposing legislation that would break the industry's immunity shield in cases of negligence and liability. If it passes, victims of gun violence might get their day in court. Both of these seem to be common sense laws, but in Congress, common sense is often hard to find. Joining us now to discuss his proposed legislation is Representative Adam Schiff. He's one of the House Congressional Gun Violence Protection Task, Task Force. He joins us from Burbank, California. Congressman, welcome back inside the war room. Michael, it's great to be with you. No, it's, it's great to have you, Congressman. We, we're really uh, excited by what you're doing. I want you to take me inside this bill and tell me a little bit about what it does. Well, Michael, as you mentioned, the gun industry enjoys a form of immunity that no other industry in America has. That is, they can act in a negligent way and be immune from responsibility. So dealers, and a very small percentage of dealers, are responsible for a huge percentage of the guns used in crime. One percent of gun dealers, for example, sell 57 percent of the guns used in crime. They can turn a blind eye to these straw purchasers who buy weapons, transfer them to people who would be uh, precluded from a background check from getting the gun themselves because they're felons or of, of mental illness. Uh, so they can turn a blind eye to this practice and nobody can hold them responsible. Uh, and that really ought to change because the background system, and I'm uh, certainly hopeful that we will pass universal background checks, that will only be as good as our ability to enforce it and our ability to make sure that the gun dealers are actually not turning a blind eye uh, or acting in negligent ways such that these, hands, these guns still get in the hands of criminals. Congressman, how does this happen? How has the gun industry been able to circumvent laws that apply to all other industries? Is it because their lobby is so strong or is it the politicians are too scared? Well, it's probably a combination of both. Their lobby is very strong. Their grassroots are very well organized. Uh, and liability strikes, you know, at the financial deep pocket for the NRA, and that is the gun manufacturers. But why should gun manufacturers be able to make their products in a negligent way when those who sell alcohol or those who make cigarettes or any product uh, doesn't enjoy that kind of immunity. Uh, for example, there is a $1 safety device that you can put on a gun such that when you remove the cartridge, if it still has a round in the chamber, the round won't fire. Uh, well, a lot of times, you know, kids will play with a gun that doesn't have a, a, a cartridge in it thinking that uh, it's unloaded and, and kids get killed that way. Uh, well, for $1 safety device, that can be prevented and those lives can be saved. But you can't hold the gun makers responsible. And so some guns continue to be made in this negligent way that endangers the public. Yeah, it's an amazing thing when you think about that, when you think about seatbelt laws. I mean, to me, that's like a seatbelt law, a federally mandated law that was put onto the uh, automobile industry. Why can't they mandate that this one dollar, people don't talk about that enough, this one dollar device could protect kids. And, you know, it, this makes me think, uh, Congressman, of, of the NRA and what they always say, guns don't kill people, people kill people. What do you say to that old maxim? Well, you know, I say that when a gun dealer or a gun maker acts in a negligent fashion, that they have responsibility, too, that they share the responsibility for the innocent loss of life. Uh, if you're a gun dealer and you have a guy coming in, he wants to buy 12 of the same identical weapon, he's not a licensed dealer, you sell him 12 guns, he comes back a week later, buys another 12 guns, you know, you're pretty well on notice that these 24 identical weapons are probably not for the sole use of that gun owner, uh, that, in fact, they're conveying them to gun trafficking organizations. Uh, so why should we let the seller off the hook when if they were in any other industry, a bartender uh, selling drinks to people getting behind the wheel or a grocer knowingly selling cigarettes to uh, minors, we don't let any of those people off the hook, but we do let the gun industry off the hook, and that just doesn't make any sense. They should be treated like every other industry in America.
Yeah, I, I totally agree, and I think people don't know about this, which, you, you know, why your legislation is so important, even in starting the conversation, getting people to understand this. Also, it's a very small minority of gun dealers that are irresponsible. Uh, you wrote an, an L.A. Times op-ed. You cited the ATF saying it's only 1 percent of dealers, but 57 percent of those guns end up being used in criminal acts. Why is the gun industry and lobby so resistant to changing this law? Well, you know, again, it's where the money for the NRA comes from. It comes from the manufacturers and somewhat from the dealers and obviously the grassroots, too. But, uh, but holding the industry accountable is something that they're simply and diametrically opposed to. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, any industry, I'm sure, that could get a free pass to act negligently would be happy to get the free pass. Uh, unfortunately, this industry uh, has gotten their will through Congress, uh, in part because of the strength of their lobby, and in part, as you point out, because of the weakness of some of the members that are afraid to cross the NRA. But uh, it's not enough just to get reelected, frankly, if you don't stand for anything. Uh, and, you know, I would urge my colleagues in the House and Senate uh, to do the right thing on the assault weapon ban, which enjoys majority support. The ban on extended ammunition clips likewise enjoys majority support. Universal background checks uh, support off the chart. I mean, if we can't get these measures, which are both necessary and popularly supported through the Congress, it's a pretty terrible indictment of our system at this point. Yeah, especially in this climate. You talk about a fear that these people have of the gun lobby. Uh, your colleague, Congresswoman Carolyn Maloney, has a fear entirely different. She's received death threats, as we said at the top. Are you rethinking at all how vocal you should be on this issue? Uh, not at all. Not at all. Because unfortunately, there are, are thousands and thousands of Americans that are killed uh, every month from gun violence in our cities. We have really two different kind of gun tragedies in America. We have the tragedies like uh, Sandy Hook that tear at the very fabric of the nation. And then we have the tragedies that we have every day where, where someone's child loses their life uh, in one of our cities from gang violence or other gun violence or a gun accident. And we can do something about this. And, and we need to do something about this. And I'm in, in really awe and admiration of my colleague, Gabby Giffords, after going through what she did, uh, that course, she has yeah. become so vocal on this issue. Uh, and I think it's incumbent on all of us uh, to do the same and to be inspired by her example. And Congressman, I couldn't agree more. Before we let you go, I want to ask you very quickly, give me one thing about which to be optimistic. You look around that chamber, 434 other colleagues, one thing to be optimistic about for people who are opposed to guns. Well, uh, you know, I think the, the one thing about Mystic about is that we've overcome more difficult hurdles than this. And, the, and there's a much greater consensus, really, on both the need and desirability for gun safety laws than, ha than there has been before. Uh, and well, when you look good. at, for example, the support for universal background checks, we should all be encouraged by that. And now we just need to make sure it happens. Okay, and uh, we're glad you're there making sure it happens. Congressman Adam Schiff of, Col of California, thank you so much for being uh, here.